Greetings, true friends. I'm sure you all heard the news that the capital of the world, the capital of the West, capital of Great Britain, London, now has a Muslim mayor. No! How could the people of London elect Osama Bin Laden as their mayor? Dear Christ, my God, have mercy on our souls. Hang on, I'm sorry. I'm just getting news through. It wasn't Osama Bin Laden they've elected. It was um, this guy. Yeah, they've elected Sadiq Khan, who, as you can see there, is just another boring cunt in a suit. Like every other politician. Ridiculously uncontroversial, really. Uh, apparently he was born in London, which is... Very strange, weird-sounding name for a town in Pakistan, isn't it? Oh, no, so, no I'm, I'm just getting news through. It's London. He was born in London. The city he's just been elected mayor of. For fuck's sake. Now, there are plenty of topics in relation to this that we can elaborate on, but I'm going to choose one in particular that I find extremely important and interesting, and that is the demographics of democracy. Now, if you said to an English guy 100 years ago, whites will be a minority in London in 100 years, and you will have a Muslim mayor in 100 years, he would laugh at you. Sorry, just to stop you there, Golden One. Um, that guy 100 years ago who wouldn't have believed that whites would be a minority in London 100 years from then, yeah, that guy would be right, because whites are not a minority in London, you fucking idiot. White people currently make up 59.79% of the nation's capital, whilst Muslims only make up 12.39%, which is only just over half as many atheists as there are in London. And I know you don't like atheists as well, but, you know, fuck you on both counts, you cunt. And then the question remains, how did England come to this? How did England come to the point where their own native population is a minority in a lot of cities and have a Muslim mayor. Now whilst I'm not entirely sure what you mean by native population, because we don't have such a thing here, okay? It's not like other parts of the English-speaking world like Australia, Canada and America that have sort of First Nations uh, populations, okay? We don't have that. So there's no such thing as a native population here. But if by native population you mean white people, then you're completely fucking wrong. Because as of the last census, not only are there not lots of cities that are majority non-white, as you claimed, there are precisely zero British cities that are majority non-white. Now, admittedly, the city of Leicester was pretty close at 50.6% white, but they still, albeit a slim one, a majority. So either stop fucking lying, or do some research that doesn't come from Stormfront or whatever, okay, and try and learn something. Oh, sorry, you're a nationalist, why would you try and learn something? And furthermore, how will England come to a point within a few decades where you have Sharia law in a lot of places? If you mean Sharia courts, as in the Sharia religious courts of arbitration, which, by the way, are not law courts, regardless of how much you fuckers want to claim they are, okay, then uh, those courts already exist in Britain, as indeed do the Beit Din courts, uh, which are religious courts of arbitration for Jewish people, and they've existed here for a hell of a lot longer, and Jewish people haven't taken over. No, golden one, they haven't taken over. So ultimately, if you want to get into a discussion about the complete removal of religious courts of arbitration, which again, to repeat, are not law courts, then by all means, you go ahead and do so, okay? But you have to do so across the board. You would have to remove them for all religions. And secondly, if you mean that in the near future there are going to be Sharia courts which supersede British law, then you're fucking wrong. You're entirely wrong. Of course, you're a nationalist. Of course you're fucking wrong. The British people, and therefore the British government by extension, are not going to countenance such things. And just because there are a minority of Muslims who are calling for Sharia court to be implemented and to supersede British law courts means nothing, because that's a minority of a very slim minority. It's not going to happen any time fucking soon, if ever. Supply and demand will always be there. So if you have a large demand for something, 
there is a large demand for a representative of Muslims in England because there are a lot of Muslims there. It's completely natural. And of course they want a representative. I don't think they're very interested in becoming decadent and degenerate uh, atheist uh, Westerners. I mean, who would? That's not a particularly attractive thing to do. Oh, I don't know, that looked quite fun actually. I mean, I quite enjoy being a decadent atheist Westerner slot or whatever fucking shit was just oozing from your mouth. Of course, you're a nationalist. You do nothing else but ooze shit from your mouth. No, this is what created this. How can we um, combat this, if you will? Now, I don't have anything in particular against Muslims. It's just that I'm for a British Britain. Golden one, you know that the words British and Muslim are not mutually exclusive, right? I mean, take for instance a guy like um, Sadiq Khan. You may have heard of him. He was just democratically elected by the majority white, majority non-Muslim city of London. He's a Muslim guy. He was born in Tooting in South London. You know, the city he's just been elected the mayor of. So if you're for a British Britain, you will want to create or ignite or reignite, perhaps it's a better term, the demand on the British side so that all British people who do not want to have Sharia laws in England, they next election vote for, you know, parties that um, can satisfy their demand. Well, I quite agree. People who oppose the installation of Sharia law over and above superseding British law should vote for candidates who also believe that. You know, um, they could vote for candidates like Sadiq Khan, for instance. You may have heard of him. He's just been elected mayor of the majority, white, majority, non-Muslim city of London. You know, London, the capital of Britain, the country you're talking about, but don't seem to have any fucking clue about. Of course, you're a nationalist. All you ever do is talk about stuff you have no clue about, because you have no clue about everything. Now, we obviously have a good few really important elections coming up in the West. We have Brexit, which I hope that uh, England and Britain will take very seriously and exit the EU. That would be absolutely glorious. Then we also have elections in, in America, in France, in Sweden coming up the next few years. So we have to work to reignite that demand for a representative who says, you know what, I'm actually more comfortable in having Europe for Europeans. You're advising Europeans to vote for nationalists. Yeah, because that's never worked out appallingly badly before, has it? But anyway, something you may have noticed so far in the video is that uh, given his Swedish accent, he doesn't always completely 100% pronounce words as you would if English was your first language, right? And this becomes an unfortunate regularity with one particular phrase, which is one of his favourites. It recurs in basically every video he ever does, which is, of course, the phrase beta leftist or beta leftists, which is basically a catch-all phrase he uses to mean anyone he doesn't like, basically anyone vaguely to the left of Genghis Khan. But unfortunately, the phrase beta leftist, when coming from a Swedish voice, sounds a bit odd, frankly. Backing down like some little beta, then you go forward and say, why? How beta leftists, so all these little betas, these little insignificant shits. But Sweden is the laughing stock of the rest of the world, because we are so beta and because we are so leftist. And now, beta leftists, I'm going to put you in checkmate, and then you have these betas, or basically what I call beta leftist. People who revere everything that's unnatural, sick, unhealthy, unglorious, untraditional. Beta leftist journalists and social justice warriors. Beta leftists. <laughs> oh god, I know I shouldn't laugh. I know it's it's not cool, right? You shouldn't take the piss out of someone for the way they they talk, especially when it's not their first language. Like, I assure you, his English is way better than my fucking Swedish, right? My Swedish is non-existent, basically. And in fact, actually, his English isn't much worse than my fucking English, to be honest. But even so, I can't help but find it funny. I mean, it's like listening to the Swedish chef from the Muppets, but only, you know, really fucking racist, and sexist, and transphobic, and homophobic, and just generally fucking bigoted. And as you can tell by the series of images that are going past on the screen, in looking up some images to go along with this voiceover bit, I discovered that there are loads and loads of really talented creative people utterly fucking wasting their time creating these amazing Swedish chef memes. Like, when did this become a fucking thing? It's amazing. Look at this. Some of these are fucking incredible. 
But anyway, let's move on, shall we? Because now it's time for... Yes, it's the inevitable bit about rape. Now, when it comes to rape apology, the golden one really isn't the worst. I mean, he's pretty fucking shitty in some areas. Like, he's obsessed about the rape fugees thing. Not because he actually gives a fuck about women getting raped or the facts of the situation or anything like that. No, no, no. It's because they're Muslims. They're brown folk. And he sees them as, like, rapist invaders or whatever, right? And that fits rather conveniently, if, you know, incorrectly, into his narrative about white versus non-white and race war although he's not honest enough to call it race war but i haven't gone with anything like that i've gone with essentially a reversal of the usual rape apology usually it's uh, horrible manosphere dickheads trying to say that basically men raping women isn't really that much of a problem or whatever right but actually this time it's the other way around what is sex sex is a transaction of power and it's really simple it's as simple as genders there are two genders and there are two different ways you can participate in the act of sex. You can either get fucked or you can do the fucking. If you do the fucking, you're gaining power from the individual you are fucking. The individual who gets fucked are submitting his or her power to the one doing the fucking. Now, keep that in mind. Sex is not on equal terms. So, whenever we talk about double standards, you need to drop these foolish notions because sex is not the same as sex if you view it from that standpoint. And thus, a man cannot be raped by a woman. What a really fucking ludicrous attitude towards sex that is. What an absolutely fucking dead on the inside husk of a human being you are. And by the way, you're completely fucking wrong. I mean, what about if a woman sticks the neck of a wine bottle up your ass without asking first, or fucks you with a strap on? Is that not rape somehow? I don't quite know how that works in your head. Also, there's a thing called forced envelopment, where basically a woman forces herself upon an erect penis. Which, unfortunately, in many jurisdictions, the UK being one, uh, is not really classified as rape, unfortunately. So what I've done is I've left a link to a petition below on the official UK government website. So sadly, only people from the UK can sign it. But if you are from the UK and uh, you care about this topic, that being, you know, rapists being uh, convicted of rape, then please uh, go and uh, sign that petition. I beseech you to do so. But anyway, let's wrap this shit up, shall we? Because quite frankly, I've had enough of this fucking douche nozzle. Right, um, there's so much I didn't even get round to talking about in this video because of time constraints and such. Like his um, transphobia. He's an absolutely horrific transphobe. He's a massive fucking homophobe. He's obsessed with the idea that watching porn is bad, right? He's absolutely obsessed with the idea of it. Essentially, when a man masturbates, he's releasing his masculine energy in for no good purpose or whatever. He's got some really quite kind of, I don't know, outdated, shitty, pointless views about that. In fact, at one point, he's, he actually made a video called Watching Porn is Extremely Gay, or something like that. And you think, how is that gay? I mean, if it's gay porn you're watching, I suppose, but, I mean, so what? Like, it's it's so absurd. Or his really weird series where he plays, like, a kind of Age of Conquest type game and goes through it as if it's an actually real thing. That's quite bizarre to watch. And there's loads of other really fucking weird shit that I didn't really get round to. But ultimately, what he is, is just a fucking extreme right-wing piece of shit who basically calls everyone a cultural Marxist or a Bieta leftist or whatever. I, I don't know why I said that in a German accent. That was weird. Um, but so, yeah, so basically he's just an out-there-on-the-right fucking twat. But with all of that unpleasantness dealt with, there is just one thing left for me, Rory Lachat, to say. The golden one. Go fuck yourself. If you change your mind I'm the first in line Honey, I'm still free Take a chance on me If you need me, let me know Gonna be around if you've got no place to go If you're feeling down If you're alone in a pretty 
birds have flown Honey, I'm still free Take a chance on me